a container that's not airtight, a humidity pack, and a bunch of reeds. And that's it. All right, what's up everybody? Kevin Benny back again. It's been a while since I've been in front of the camera. Uh, pretty crazy start to the summer, which is definitely not a bad thing. Really good thing. But I'm glad I'm in front of the camera for you guys sharing some thoughts on music and the saxophone. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to store your reeds properly. This is one of those things that's very, very important for woodwind players. And I think it's pretty, the, the woodwind, professional woodwind players that I associate with kind of have a standard practice to this. I have a few different takes. So definitely wanna share what I think of this and it's gonna really help out with your playing. Before I go on, definitely gotta say, if you're new to the channel and you have not subscribed yet, definitely considering I talk about everything saxophone from classical to jazz saxophone along with general music knowledge like ear training and improvising. And speaking of ear training and improvising, I just came out with a practice tool that deals with all the modes of the major scale and every key. It's really gonna get your ears honed into these major modes which are the building blocks to music, um, great for improvisers. The PDF also comes with a scale to chord relationship glossary that you can click through, it takes you right to the scale from the chord. Um, really useful stuff. If you're part of my crew in my email newsletter, you already got early access to that PDF and I'm getting really great feedback, so I really appreciate that. And you also got that discount code. So if you want a discount, be sure to click on the link in the description below to be part of the crew. Discount will end July 26th, so do it soon. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. That was my spiel. You may have skipped that all, so if you did, go back and listen to it. Okay, anyway, here we go. So storing your reeds properly is probably one of the most important things you can do as a woodwind player. I mean, your reed is the thing that makes the tone on your instrument. So if that's not working properly, then you're not gonna get the most efficient tone and you're not gonna have a really good time. If you don't store your reeds properly, the one thing that usually will happen to your reeds that can make them very maybe unplayable or just not playing well at all is that the reeds will warp. Now, a warped reed is basically, it's changing its shape in some way. Uh, you know, it's, your reed should be nice and flat, but when it warps, just like wood warps, it can bend a certain way, maybe go concave or convex or even bend, you know, uh, widthwise, you know, concave or convex. And what that does when the reed warps is it will prevent the reed from making an airtight seal against your mouthpiece. You know, if you have that little bit of warpage, then you're gonna get a little gap in under the, the reed and the table of the mouthpiece. You want an airtight seal to get the most proficient tone on your instrument. So storing your reeds improperly will result in warping. So, so why do reeds warp? Um, it, it basically comes down to when you have extreme humidity changes in the reed's cane. You know, you, you play on it, you get it pretty wet from playing on it, and then you put it out to dry and, you know, it can go from like 95% humidity to like 40 or 30 to maybe 20 in like the dry months. And that's extremely lar a, a large gap. And if you do that over and over again every day, the reed is going through a lot of changes and what that does is it'll start changing the reed's shape. It'll warp the reed. So we don't want that. How we stop this is by minimizing that gap of humidity change and trying to keep them at a consistent humidity level as much as possible. So in a case for your reeds, the one thing you want to use is these humidity packs, these Boveda packs. This is a 65% humidity pack uh, and it's a 60 gram one, not like the five gram one. So any container you put your reeds in, a reed case, using a humidity pack is the number one thing that's gonna help you out a ton with keeping that humidity at a constant level for your reeds. When it comes to the percentage of humidity, that is different per player. Uh, some people like a really pretty damp reed at like 80% humidity. Some people like a dry reed at like 50, 55% humidity. But I don't recommend going any lower than 50%. Honestly, I think 55% should be the cutoff um, if you want the best playable reeds out of your case. I right now use a 62%, it's in there, you can't see it, but it's 62% humidity pack. In the winter months, I was just using 75%. I just found as I got into the more humid months here in the summer, uh, my reeds were just feeling kind of dead. And as soon as I changed to 62%, uh, 
the, the deadness went away. I mean, some people might think I'm crazy for it doesn't make a difference, but I can tell the difference and that's my preference. So that's what I use. But again, I, if you're new to it, I'd say a great place to start would be 70% humidity. If you're interested in purchasing any of these humidity packs, which I highly recommend if you're a woodman player, I'm gonna have links in the description below at no extra cost to you. I'll get a small cut of that, which is gonna really help me create more content here. I'll have tons of different percentages along with the 60 gram or 67 gram size to the five gram size as well. So definitely consider using my links for that. Dealing with warped cane is something that's very simple, really. I mean, it doesn't, it won't, completely get rid of it, but it minimizes it considerably, uh, just putting that humidity pack inside your reed case. Now, the other thing that might happen when you're storing reeds that's not so good is you might develop mold on your reeds or some type of bacterial growth, especially if you're putting a lot of reeds into your reed case and you're planting a lot, and if you soak your reeds in water, which I do not recommend, and there's a video about why I do not recommend that, put it right there. I go into the science behind it. I recommend just soaking your reeds in your saliva. But anyway, if you do get mold on your reeds, what's usually happening is your reed case is just developing, there's too much stale air that gets stuck inside of your reed case and the humidity level just can't drop quick enough and there's just not enough circulation in the air to basically keep any type of microorganisms away. So the one thing to do to get rid of that is not have an airtight container. I do know some reed cases have like watertight, airtight um, ability to them, which doesn't really make any sense. I mean, some people think that the humidity pack will work better in an airtight container. Technically, yes, but you don't need an airtight container to have the effectiveness of the humidity pack to work. I mean, of course your container doesn't, it can't just be like open all the time. Uh, you want it to be very closed, but you know, I use, this is a, a photo box, all right? I mean, no one uses photos anymore, but you can still get this. Again, it's like a six by four inch photo box. This fits extremely well right into the pouch of my case. This is a, a BAM case. I'll put it in and show you. Look, it goes right in there. Can you see it? slips like perfectly in there and then I just can easily zip that up. I'm in super awkward position to show you, but <laughs> it goes in there real nicely. It's actually perfect and holds a bunch of reeds. So this is a photo box. Again, I'll put a link in the description to this, but it's great because it's not airtight um, and it closes extremely nicely. This little latch right here is super durable. I mean, I've had this for so many years. The plastic is extremely, uh, it's great plastic, um, many opens and closes, and this thing is still cooking. Other people use like pencil boxes and things like that, but again, you just want it to not be airtight. There's not many cases or any containers for that matter that are like airtight or watertight. If it says uh, like water resistant or something like that, then you don't want to get that. I know some instrumentalists will use those like ID containers that are waterproof for their reeds, but again, I don't really prefer that because it's airtight and we don't want that because mold will grow. So that's that, simple as that. Honestly, those two things between warping reeds and keeping mold away from your reeds, that's like the, the only two things you have to really worry about when you're storing your reeds, in my opinion, and most woodland players' opinion. One thing that I do is I just keep my reeds in the plastic sleeves that they come in. Um, I do this because, well, I think that the flat back of these containers supply efficient support to keep the back of the reeds flat. But what it, they don't do is they do not cover the vamp of the reed, so it lets the reed dry very evenly and very naturally. Where some players, they'll take like a reed case, like maybe those black uh, reed cases that hold four, that really cover and smash down the vamp of the reed um like they go in and they really cover that part of the reed i don't like that because they don't dry very evenly um they don't dry quick enough for my taste i like to have my reeds dry as fast as possible because i play a lot and i don't want them to get waterlogged so that's just my take on that but some woodwind players do take a reed case put their reeds in the reed case and then take a container and then put that in the container with a humidity pack but again my preference is just these little plastic sleeves
And that's basically it. Super simple stuff. Again, I'll have the humidity packs in links in the description below along with this case. But again, any case will do as long as it closes well and it's not airtight. Just a very closed container, just not airtight or watertight. All right, that's the video. Thanks so much, everybody. I hope this helps. I really think be mindful of how you're storing your reads. It's gonna make a huge difference of how you're, you're sounding. If you have anything to add to this or wanna share what you do with your reads, please comment in the, under the, the, you know, the description below. If you liked it, smash that like button. If you didn't, then of course you can hit the unlike button. It's totally fine. Again, make sure to be part of the crew. Uh, click on the link in the description below. You'll get tips and tricks on a weekly to bi-weekly basis along with that discount code for my uh, mode PDF that's gonna really help with improvisers and ear training. Do that before July 26th. Of course, this is the time definitely to subscribe with the bubble right there. And as always, stay inspired. See you guys soon.